Well, let's stand again. Let's stretch our legs. 263 in your hymn books. Sing one more song. 263. <clears throat> Watch their prince of glory die. His followers are in mourning, for in the tomb their Savior lies. But at the grave something is happening. 
as they squeezed, I've lost my hold. And angels rise in anticipation for the sun is coming home. And there he comes, and he's got the blood that he shed on Calvary. And the Father says, Well done, my son. This is the last blood I'll ever need. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus, this is the last blood I'll ever need. And there he comes, and he's got the blood that he shed on Calvary. And the Father says, well done, my son, this is the last blood. I'll ever need this is the last blood I'll ever need I will ever need all right well thank you for that song Let's take our Bibles this morning. We're going to be in the Gospel of John in chapter number 14. And again, I want to thank you for being with us this morning, and it means a lot. Easter is a big day, and it's a big uh, church day, but also it is a big family day, and I'm sure that you have a lot of things planned this afternoon. And um, really look back on your life, and it's usually Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, and it's like you reflect on these moments that you spend with your loved ones and with your family. Uh, so it is a very special day. And so before uh, we go into special events and eat ham, I don't know how that got involved in Easter Sunday, ham <laughs> equals ham, uh, and do all these things, we'll uh, focus uh, for just a little moment in time upon uh, the Word of God, upon the... over there. <laughs> So if you, you found your place there, John chapter number 14. She's supposed to sing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Above all, above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, Above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders this world has ever known, above all wealth, and treasures of the earth there's no way to measure what you're worth crucified laid behind a stone you live to die rejected and alone like a rose that is trampled on the ground. You, you took the fall. You thought of me above all. Like a rose trampled on the ground. You took the fall and thought of me above all but were you there when he rose up from the dead were you there when he rose up from the dead oh 
sometimes I want to shout glory, glory, hallelujah. Were you there when my Jesus rose up from the dead? Hallelujah. Anybody else want to sing this morning? <laughs> We're in John 14. Good job, Julie. Thank you for that. And did you write that? Did you write that song? No. I've not, I've not heard that song. Okay. The rest of you have. I don't know where I've been living. Under a rock or something. John chapter number 14. John chapter number 14. This is a, uh, a wonderful and beloved portion of Scripture. And uh, we have been in the section of the Gospel of John between John 13 and John chapter number 17 here for the last uh, three weeks or so. Uh, two Sundays ago, we were in John chapter number 13. The Lord washes his disciples' feet. Uh, and here we're in an upper room. And there is now 11 apostles, 11 disciples left. Judas has gone out. He's left the room. He has gone out to betray the Lord. The Lord is telling his disciples that he is going to be crucified, that he is going to die for the sins of the world, uh, that he's going to ri rise again, uh, and that he's going to go to his Father in heaven. And so it's a very heavy and weighty time in the life of the 11 disciples here. And uh, this morning, the title of the sermon is Your Antidote for Trouble or Your Alternative for Trouble. Because the Lord's going to say to His disciples, Let not your hearts be troubled. And each and every one of us have a lot that we could be troubled about this morning. Uh, but praise the Lord, we have a command. It's not God's will that you would be troubled. Uh, and uh, we can take heed to the advice that our Savior gives here in John chapter number 14. So John chapter number 14, we're going to read from verse number 1 down through verse number 6. Uh, and if you'd like, you can join us for the reading of God's Word. We're going to stand together as we read in verse number 1. John 14, verse number 1. It says there, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house... Are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, and let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him to bless our time this morning in His Word. Uh, and let's, uh, let's go to the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for this day that You have given to us, this day that we get to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank You that the Lord Jesus Christ lives this morning and we thank you that he ever lives the bible says to make intercession for us that he is our great high priest that he is uh, the one that stands between between us and the father we thank you lord for this portion of scripture we'll look at this morning this comfort to disciples lord i pray that you'd help us to pull up a chair and hear the savior's voice there in that upper room that last supper that last dinner before the crucifixion. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to cleave to the words of the Savior. Lord, help us to hear them and understand them and help that, us to receive the words that you say into our hearts this morning. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. So Christ said, let not your hearts be troubled. Uh, to be troubled means to be shaken or to be stirred up. Uh, now at the close of John 13, right before John 14, uh, the Lord did tell Peter, and he was the leader of the group, the outspoken uh, fella, uh, the disciple with the foot-shaped mouth. He's, 
he uh, is told by the Lord. Uh, he says, Lord, I will follow you whithersoever thou goest. And he says, the cock shall not crow twice till thou hast denied me thrice. Peter's just told by the Lord that he is going to fail and he's going to fail miserably. Uh, another thing that he tells his disciples is that the shepherd is going to be smitten and the disciples are going to be scattered. Uh, he's, he also told them that one of you is going to betray me. Let me ask you a question, you know, have you ever experienced anything bad in church? Well, uh, one of the 12 disciples betrayed the Lord and betrayed the other uh, disciples and, and turned on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so their world was in an upheaval. And let me say this, is that there's going to be times in your life uh, where your hopes, your dreams, your expectations of what you're going to get out of life, that they're going to be completely turned upside down. Uh, there's going to be instances in your life where your dreams... And your hopes are going to be shattered. They're going to be dashed to the earth. That you are going to experience heartache. You're going to experience sorrow. You're going to have expectations up here. And they're going to come in. Life's going to come in somewhere around down here. And this is exactly what's going on in the life of the disciples is that the Lord told them uh, the bad news that outside in the world is going to be tumultuous. It's going to be troublesome uh, that you are going to experience the sin of others towards you and you yourself are going to be victims of your own sin. You know, of all the sinners in the world that I have the most trouble with is this guy right here. Amen. And they're all going to fail the Lord miserably. Uh, last Sunday, we're sitting in church in Southwest Baptist Church in Oklahoma City. Uh, and we had the kids with us, and we give Teddy, who's our six-year-old, a coloring pad, you know, and hope and pray that he's not going to embarrass his parents. <laughs> he's just going to stick to the coloring pad. And he was writing out his Awana verse in uh, Romans 6.23, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, he was six years old, and I thought, I said to, his, to uh, my wife, I said, uh, that's pretty good. And she said, yeah, that's pretty good. And then it reminded me, when our son Timothy, I got to understand Timmy. Um, you know, some, you know, all kids are different, aren't? Are they not genetically different? Amen. Well, Timmy, he could, I, he could wear the shirt that says, "I see Brother Paul back there," and it reminded me of something. Okay, so when we were visiting here, we we're candidating three years ago, uh, and Brother Paul and I went on visitation, and he said, um, "Is is your son Timmy? Is he a special needs boy?" And I laughed very hard. I just thought it was fun. I didn't take his answer. I thought it was hilarious because his mother continued to tell him, Timmy, quit acting like that or people are going to think you're a handy kid. Okay? And again, nothing again. But he, he would just, he's in his own world. Okay? And so he could wear the t-shirt that says, I'm in my own world, but it's okay. People know me there. You know? Uh, so we were, we were in a big meeting and with people that we knew as a big conference. Uh, it's called the Summit. It's in Berlin, New Jersey. And the preacher was up there preaching, Charlie Clark. Uh, and he says, I want, he's talking about being thankful. He says, I want you to take a pen and a piece of paper. I want you to write down one thing that you are thankful for. Now, Timmy at the time was six, same age as Teddy, you know, last week. But this is some years ago. He's sitting down. Uh, by my cousin and her husband. And I look down, I see them just bent over, split, split over laughing and giggling. Uh, and I look down at Timmy's paper and um, he wrote down a three letter word. One thing that he is thankful for. S-I-N, sin. That's what he was thankful for at six years old. And so, they were chuckling and, and, you know, they said, what do you, what do you teach, what do you teach in your son, you know? Well, you know how preacher's kids are, you know, if there's one thing in life they're thankful for. Uh, but here, you know, I think this little boy, uh, he's grown up in church for the six years of his history. And he, he knows one of the great themes of Christianity is sin. You can't escape sin. You see that from Genesis chapter number three, and you see it worked on in the Lord Jesus Christ taking care of it all the way to Revelation chapter number 22 uh, is this theme of sin. 
Uh, and, you know, as Teddy wrote down this little piece of paper last Sunday, uh, the wages of sin is death. Uh, the Lord said that if you eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the day that you eat thereof, ye shall surely die. Uh, now, this wasn't just a physical death because they would later on die physically, but this was going to be a spiritual death, that there was going to be a separation between Adam and Eve and God. Uh, and remember when they ate of that tree, they went and hid themselves and tried to cover up themselves with fig leaves and God had to pursue mankind. Uh, and let me tell you something, uh, that God is in the business of pursuing you. And when God pursues you, there is nowhere to hide. I don't care how thick those fig leaves are, you're not going to be able to hide from God. So God's in the business of calling men and calling women to himself. Uh, so he hears a voice in the garden, Adam, Adam, where art thou? And even though Adam was reconciled to the Lord Jesus Christ uh, spiritually, there was also the physical implications of sin. Uh, that there was going to be a curse upon the earth, uh, that thorns and thistles were going to grow out of the ground, and that the bee would sting and the mosquito would bite, and there would, be, there would be all sorts of dangers and toils and snares around you. But God said this. He said, I have cursed the ground for your sake. You know why life is hard? So you stop looking this way, and you start looking this way. Amen, brother. And the Lord said, to his disciples there in the upper room, it's going to be hard around you. Uh, it's going to be very tumultuous. It's going to be very troublesome. But I'm going to do something special for you. I'm going to leave you a supernatural peace, and I'm going to leave you supernatural comfort. Um, you are body, soul, and spirit. And actually in the Bible, the Bible reverses that order, calls you spirit, soul, and body. Uh, so you and I this morning, we are an eternal soul, but we have, for a short time period, a physical body. You have a physical body, your vehicle that you're traveling with, uh, but someday your body is going to die. And in the meantime, your body is killing you. I remember one time seeing an interview on TV it was with Bob Barker. Remember the price is right? Yeah. Come on down. Uh, and... Bob was well into his 90s at that time. Uh, and the guys interviewed him and said, how you doing, Bob? He said, I'm doing great. It's just my body. It's killing me. <laughs> you know, no matter what your age this morning uh, is that your body is killing you. But you are an eternal soul and you do have a spiritual nature uh, and the Lord Jesus Christ was going to give his disciples a supernatural comfort. He was going to give them a supernatural peace that in the midst of trouble and turmoil, that they could enjoy something supernatural from God. Look, if you will, if you have your Bibles there, John 14, 27. The Lord says there, uh, Peace I leave with you. My peace give I unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Remember verse number one, let not your heart be troubled. How are you going to let not your heart be troubled? He says, my peace I giveth you, not that the world gives, give I unto you, but my peace give I unto you. This is called the supernatural peace of God. It's described in Philippians as the peace that passes all understanding because it comes from a supernatural place. It comes from a supernatural location. And you didn't get that peace and joy from, from the world around you. Uh, you got it from heaven above. Another thing the Lord said that he was going to give them is uh, another comforter. When the Lord was with them, he was the Bible says in John chapter number one uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ, but we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, that God himself was tabernacled. He was clothed in flesh and he dwelt among men. 
And so when the Lord Jesus Christ for 33 years was here upon this earth with his disciples, he was their physical comforter. The only problem was he was only in one location at a time. And if they strayed just a little bit from Christ, they got themselves in big trouble. Uh, but the Lord had a plan that when he was going to die on the cross for sins, he was going to be buried. He was going to rise again. He was going to go to his father that he was going to send down from heaven. He was going to send down his Holy Spirit, his comforter, and they were that his spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ spirit, he that is with you will be in you. That the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be inside of you and he is going to be the comforter. Look, if you will, to verse number 26. He says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So the Lord said uh, to Nicodemus in John chapter number three, he said, except a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, how can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter into his mother's womb the second time? And the Lord corrects him, says, no, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. You have to have a spiritual awakening that you have to be born again by the Spirit of God. And if you are, the Lord Jesus Christ himself comes inside of you by his Holy Spirit. That's what we call receiving Christ. Now we know technically that Christ rose again and bodily he's at the right hand of the throne of Jesus and you can call upon him at any moment to and receive him as your Savior. So physical location is up there, but spiritual location is everywhere. So I heard about an atheist teacher who's trying to confuse young Johnny as a believer. He said, Johnny, let me ask you a question. How big is God anyway? He said, well, I know that God's big enough to fill up the whole world and that he's small enough to live in my heart. You know, that's good theology. Yes, right. The Lord said, I will send you another comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. So I want you to notice another thing here this morning. If you are a believer, you are a child of God, and you know the Lord Jesus Christ lives and dwells inside you, you could say, Preacher, I can take you back to the time and location where I called upon the Lord Jesus Christ to save me. I went down in Oklahoma City. Uh, we, we drove past Eagle Crest Apartments. Eagle Crest Apartments. Um, a lot of high crimes and misdemeanors went on at that place. But uh, third floor up is where I got down on my knees and asked the Lord Jesus Christ to be my personal Savior. Now, I grew up in church, and I, I was orthodox in my mind, but pagan in my heart. Let me say that this morning, praise the Lord. You're given the Lord Jesus Christ due diligence. You came to church before you ate your ham on Easter Sunday. You ought to be proud of yourself this morning. <laughs> but let me tell you something. It's not good enough to be orthodox in your mind and not to receive the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. So back to Eagle Crest Apartments when, 20 years ago when I was 22 years old, I got down on my knees. And what I knew about Jesus in my mind, I now received into my heart and I was born again into the family of God. I, the Bible says I was made a new creature. It says that I was placed inside of Christ. Uh, and so if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Now, I still struggle with the flesh, the body, but that spiritual man, that spiritual nature in me is as is, is perfect as the Lord Jesus Christ. It's where the Holy Ghost dwells. And so here the Lord says to his disciples who know him, he says, let not your heart be troubled. And he said, neither let it be afraid. Now look at verse number one again. Let not your heart be troubled. He said, believe in God, believe also in me. The alternative to trouble for the disciples and the alternative for trouble for everyone who ever breathed there is you're either going to have trouble in this world because of the sin of others and the sin of yourself, or you are going to believe in God. You know, um, you know what the job of the preacher is? Number one, to preach the word, but um, the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
all I'm supposed to do is to proclaim this book and tell people to believe in God. <laughs> that's, the, that's the whole job. That's all that I have to do. Uh, and so the Lord says to his disciples, he says, believe in God, believe also in me. I want you to notice three things that the Lord said to believe in, and this is going to be the comfort for your soul. Number one was going to be believing in a place. Believing in a place. Uh, I remember when I was a young man and going on vacation, and my mom, we would be there for about two days, and she would say, I can't wait to get home. Remember Dorothy of Kansas? <laughs> there's no place like home. Uh, and, you know, there's something nice about being home in your dwelling where you, uh, you know the people, you know the places, you know where everything is at. There's something comfortable about being home. And, and the Lord was going to tell his disciples here that their home waits for them in heaven. Uh, you know, the one thing about this earth is that everything is always changing. I try to slow it down a little bit as much as I can, you know, and, uh, but nothing ever stays the same. And that, that uh, no place here upon this earth, the Bible says, is a continual dwelling. And you can look around and I can look at all your faces this morning. You can look at my face. Do you know that there's going to come a time that you're going to have to say goodbye to me and I'm going to have to say goodbye to you? Yep. You know what death is? Death is a separation. You know, you, know, you live, you are an eternal soul. Uh, but when you say goodbye to somebody in death, you say goodbye to them until you see them again someday at your home in heaven. And so the Lord says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And he says this, in my father's house are many mansions. He said, there is a place of comfort. Uh, the Bible talks about that we desire a better country. You know, there's, a, there's coming a time uh, for the believer that they're going to go to a place where sin no longer exists. You know, when you go to heaven, you're not going to have to lock your doors. That can be nice. I know Webster's a place worth living, but um, where life is worth living, and if you don't live in Webster, the other side of the coin, life is not worth living, right? <laughs> uh, so if you live in Webster, life is worth living. Uh, but we still lock our doors, don't we, if we live in Webster? And uh, there's still crime, and there's still uh, sin, and we still have to put up with our own sin. You know how many times I have to ask myself, did I do the right thing? And a lot of times the answer is no. <laughs> okay. Uh, but you don't want to get to heaven. The Bible says, I will be like him for I will see him as he is. I, I will never have to uh, second guess myself because that sin nature is going to be removed Amen. from me and your sin nature is going to be removed from you. And we can bear our hearts and bear our souls to one another and we can love each other with a perfect, godly, heavenly love. Uh, and this is why the Apostle Paul said, I have a desire to depart and be which, with Christ, which is, it says, far better. A lot of times we talk about heaven at a funeral, like it's some pie in the sky place. Well, they went to a better place. Uh, the Bible says it's far better. And the Bible says that inside the heart of a believer, there is a longing for heaven and there is a longing for our salvation to come to wit. That means come to completion. That you and I, if you're born again by the Spirit of God, you've been given the Holy Spirit, which is a third part of your nature. That's just your down payment. But someday, your soul is going to be reconciled to God himself. Amen. There'll be absolutely nothing between your soul and the Savior. You're going to see Jehovah. I, I want you to notice here that heaven is going to be so wonderful because heaven is a place of relationships. Let me tell you the greatest thing that God ever gives you in this life. So enjoy today because the greatest thing that God ever gives you in, in this life is, besides himself, other people. You know, when you're laying on your back and looking at the bright lights and you're breathing your last, you're not going to say, man, I wish I worked more overtime. Wish I took the second job. I wish I, went, I spent more time away from my loved ones and away from my family. Now, you know what you're going to do? You're going to draw close to you the ones that you love and the ones that you care about. And I want you to notice most importantly and most of all, he says, in my father's house are many mansions. It's important because it's the father's house. Uh, and he says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will surely come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. 
Uh, you know what, believer, that uh, death is far overrated. Uh, Pastor Major read uh, uh, from the account of Lazarus about the resurrection. He says that he that believeth in me shall never die. Uh, you know, when you take your last breath, believer, that you're going to be more alive then uh, than you ever were here upon this earth. Uh, I love that song where it says, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. Uh, David said like this, he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. If you're going to go through the mountain pass, you have to get a guide that has been through that mountain pass, or you're not going to make it through the mountain pass. Well, guess what? You have a guide unto death. Somebody who has died and rose again and has defeated death, hell, and the grave, and is your guide in death. And it's going to say, Jack, come on. And he's going to take me by the hand and he is going to lead me through having the way, the truth, and the life. He says, I'm going to go away, prepare a place. And if I go, I'm going to surely come again. I'm looking forward to it. I don't want to be cynical here, but I'm looking forward to breathing my last and Amen. seeing the Son of God Amen. face to face. Yes, I sir. shall behold him. He said, the Father is there and I am there. Psalms 23, uh, David said this, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Uh, you know, another good thing about heaven uh, is it is forever. Thankful for my uh, real estate agent here, Joe G. Sells. Put in a plug. You owe me, man. <laughs> um, he, he asked Julie and I, when we're, he's selling us the house, he said, is this your forever home? You remember that? You probably say that every time, right? He just wanted to make sure we're happy, and I appreciate that. Um, and I smiled and said, yeah, sure. But you know what? There ain't no forever home here. My forever home is up there. And someday I'm going to my forever home. Uh, and you know what? I, I, you know, as a father, I want to make sure, I, I want to make sure as a husband that my wife is going to the same forever home. And I want to make sure that my children are going to that forever home. And, and someday there's going to be no more separation forever ever for all those that are there. Uh, so he said, let not your heart be troubled. Why? Because you can believe in a place. Because heaven is real. And heaven is every bit as real as 48 South Estate Drive, Webster, New York, the place that you're at right now. It is every bit as real and perhaps even more real than this place right here because it is an eternal dwelling place and eternal home. It's a place of relationships. And then secondly, he said, uh, believe in a person. He said, believe in God, believe also in me. Um, now Philip's going to say, Jesus, you can read this later, this afternoon. I have to eat your ham before you fall asleep. <laughs> Philip says, show us the Father in it suffices to us. Jesus said, Philip, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. All you need to know about God is seen in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Word. He is the expression of the Father. So he says, believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus prepared this place. You know, it says in Hebrews that all things are redeemed by his blood. He's brought all things to himself. Uh, the Bible says this, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. You see, as soon as the fall of mankind, uh, mankind understood this. Adam not Eve understood this right there when they had sinned, uh, that the innocent had to die for the guilty. Uh, that right there, that God sacrificed an animal and clothed them in the animal skins. And they knew that this something innocent was going to have to die for that which was guilty. Uh, let me tell you. There is great, great, exceeding wickedness in our sin. Here's the reason why. We have a righteous and holy God, which we have violated and which we have sinned against. If you took out, I don't have my car key, but you can pretend you see it, right? If I took out my car key uh -huh. and scratched a rock with it, just a plain old stone, there'd be no violation, right? If I went out there and, who's got an old clunker this morning? Okay. Went out there to Evelyn's car, scratched that car. She'd be a little upset, but she'd say, eh, well, 
Not like you ruined my paint job, right? <laughs> Made it took off some rust. It's a little bit of a violation there. Yeah. Now, if I went to um, a Ferrari, quarter million dollar car, and uh, took that key and walked all the way down the Ferrari and scratched that car, that'd be a little bit different of a crime, wouldn't it? Not? You know that I might go to jail for that crime because that is a multi-thousand dollar violation of property. You know, with your sin, you know who you sin against? A righteous and holy God. Amen. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Death and hell, separation from God for eternity. Uh, and let me tell you something about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he has a threefold uh, office, prophet, priest, and king. Uh, and here's what, here's what he did. When he came, he revealed unto us the Father. Everything we need to know about God is revealed to us in, in Jesus, that he was the revelation of God. So he came, and when he spoke, he's speaking the words of God. He was come from God and spoke for God on God's behalf. He was the prophet. Then also, he is the priest. He offered up himself once for sacrifice for sins. Remember that John the Baptist, his cousin, says, uh, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Remember when he died, the sacrificial system, these were all types, shadows, and figures of him which is to come, uh, that the veil in the temple was ripped from top to bottom. The way into the Holy of Holies is open through Jesus Christ because he was the perfect sacrifice for sins. The Bible says he took his own blood and offered up himself once sacrifice for sins there on the mercy seat in heaven. And then he did this, which no priest ever did in the Old Testament. He sat down because you know why? His work was done. It is finished. Remember on the cross? It is finished. Uh, and so the way into the holy place is made by Jesus Christ. Uh, now he does have another office. It's called king. He is the judge of all of the earth. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, I don't know about that Old Testament God. I mean, he's just really mean. I would say, do you ever read Revelation? Yeah. <laughs> because that's where the idea of the Lord Jesus Christ comes into completion. Uh, eyes as a flame of fire, feet as brass. Here comes the righteous judge that is to judge. Uh, and so here you see the wrath of the Lamb. Uh, and so here's the thing. The Lord is long-suffering. You know, we're all breathing this morning. You know what that means? That we're underneath the mercy of God and that he's long-suffering and he's slow to wrath. A lot of people in today's society crying out for justice. Justice ain't what you want, especially from God. Amen. You know what you want is you want mercy. And I got good news for you. God's mercy is abundant and, and he is quick to save and he's mighty to save. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, so John 3, 16 tells us a few things. It tells us how much God loves us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, free gift of salvation, gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so the Lord Jesus says, believe in a place and then also believe in a person because the Lord Jesus Christ has made the way possible into that heavenly place. And then also believe in a person, but believing is taking it personally. And here's what I mean by this. You are a soul. You have a body. Be concerned about your soul. Again, you know what? I want to thank everybody in attendance, those who are watching online, uh, for tuning in. Um, and praise the Lord, on Easter Sunday, on Resurrection Sunday, you're celebrating the Lord Jesus Christ by being in church. And you're giving him his due. Uh, but you know, we're all in danger of having an outward formality and not having an inward, conscious, soul decision. You know, you can go to church and... You know, you can put up with about anything for an hour, right? Especially when you're an adult. I mean, that's what you got. That's what your parents trained you to do when you were little. Uh, you know, go in and 
sit there and sit still and act like you're paying attention and nod when it's right and clap when it's right. Um, but it's kind of like in a little Johnny in the classroom, kept on standing up. Teacher says, sit down, Johnny. You stand up, sit down, Johnny. She finally comes over to him and pushes him down. I don't think they're allowed to do that anymore, but they were when I went to school. They could spank us, too, when I went to school. I was actually well-behaved. I, I was afraid of corporal punishment. And, uh, but they push, push down the chair, and Johnny says to his teacher, he says, I might be sitting down on the outside, but I'm standing up on the inside. <laughs> um, you know, and there was a lot of people in Christ Day that were, they were sitting down on the outside, but they were standing up on the inside. Um, do you know that you have a personal uh, responsibility because God has given you individual soul liberty that you can choose the Lord Jesus Christ to make him your personal savior that you can say to the Lord Jesus Christ Lord will you save my soul will you be my savior in John 14 6 I want you to notice Jesus is the great I am's um, there's seven of them in the Gospel of John, you know, in, in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He that eats of the bread that I give him will never hunger. He says, I am the water of life. He that drinks of the water that I give him will never thirst. He says, I am the door. It's the only way to God. He's the door. He says, I am the shepherd. And here he says, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. I am the way. Christ gives you a direction to live. I'm so thankful. I mean, you know when we say, I was lost, I was unsaved? You know what? I was lost in every sense of the word before the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. came and found me. Amen. You know, I, I thought I had a glimpse of some vision of you know, something to pursue or something to follow, but I was truly, absolutely lost without the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but I found out Him to be the way you know when everybody else was turning away from Christ in John chapter number 6, uh, Jesus turned to his disciples uh, and he says, Will you also go away? you going to go some other way? you going to get off the path? Or are you going to leave me? He says, Where are we going to go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. There's no other choice. Uh, he says, I am the way. There's nothing like the direction that Jesus gives you. I'm the way. I am the truth. The truth. The absolute truth truth in a world of fake news internet being scrubbed you know I, I'm thankful I can go to a place Amen. and I can open up the word of God mm -hmm. and uh, cleanse them through thy truth we just read in uh, in communion cleanse them through thy truth thy word is truth that there's absolute truth in scripture and I get to yield myself. I don't choose what is my truth. <laughs> There's something outside of myself and spoken unto me by the Holy Spirit of God, the Word of God, that cannot be removed from God Himself, that there is truth that I can surrender my heart to. Jesus is the way, He is the truth, and that He is the life. There's only two groups of people in the Bible. I've spoken about this, John talks about it twice. John 3, 36, it says, He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son hath not life, and the wrath of God abides upon him. There's not Baptists and Episcopalians and Roman Catholics and Muslims, and that's not how God looks at people. Here's how God looks at people in his economy. He that has the Son, you either possess the Son, you've received the Son as your Savior, and you have life, or you do not have the Son, and you do not have life life. John talks about this in 1 John chapter number 5 as well. He says, He that has the Son hath life, and he that has not the Son of God has not life. Let me ask you this question this morning in closing. Under the sound of my voice, is your heart troubled? You know what the antidote is? Believe in Christ. The alternative to trouble is Christ. Let me ask you a question. If you, do you know for sure that if you were to die that you'd go to heaven? Yes. And the Lord said this, all have sinned and come short of 
the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. You know, the Lord Jesus, he talked about heaven, and he's encouraging us to go there, to believe in him, to go there. But you know, the Lord Jesus Christ preached about hell more than any other person in the entire Bible. You know why? Is that he never wanted anyone ever to go there. It says in it says in Romans 10, 13, it says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let me ask you, let's draw a circle around ourselves this morning. All we see is ourself. And inside that circle, there's the Lord Jesus Christ. And could we say to the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus, please be my Savior. I trust in you as the way, the truth, and the life. I trust in you to take me to heaven when I die. I trust in you to be my savior. I'm not trusting in myself. I'm not trusting in this church. I'm not trusting in anything I've ever done. I'm trusting in you and you only as my savior. Let me ask you a question. If you could say that to the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart and in your life, I'm going to lead everybody who would like to pray and ask Jesus Christ as to be their savior in a prayer here in a minute. We're going to have heads bowed and eyes closed. I'll pray for you. And if you'd like to pray and ask Jesus as your savior, I'll give you the opportunity to, to do so. Okay, so let's go to Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that uh, you've provided comfort for us. Lord, I pray that you would just bless everybody underneath the sound of my voice. And those who are watching online, I pray that you'd bless them as well. And Lord, I pray that you would be with those here this morning that do not know you as Savior, that they'd like to pray and receive Christ. I pray that you'd bless them as they pray. And with heads bowed and eyes closed. Thank you so much for watching our services today. We hope you enjoyed them very much. Uh, We'd appreciate it if you liked and subscribed to this channel. Also, we'd love to hear from you. If you can email us at mylbbc at gmail.com, we're going to send you this book. It's called Done, What Most Religions Do Not Teach You about the Bible. It tells you how you can have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Also, if you'd like to find out more about our church and our church family, you can visit us at lbbc.info. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video. Have a good day.